Hi students, um, today's little review is about separable differential equations, which is an A-B topic, but which is traditionally a pretty low scoring section and not that hard. It's just um, a lot of steps and usually a lot of points attached to the steps. So um, I'm going to go through an old AP problem with a separable differential equation in it. Um, and then I posted a whole bunch of separable differential, differential equation practice. Um, I could see this being a part of a question on your um, on your test because I know that um, it's an important topic and it's traditionally pretty low scoring, even though it's not a BC only topic. So I'm going to um, <clears throat> rewrite this separable differential equation. It's dy over dx equals e to the y times 3x squared minus 6x. And the reason I wrote it in two different colors, maybe you're figuring that out, is these are separable differential equations. You want to get, the first thing you want to do is move the y's and dy's together and move the x and dx together. Traditionally, on an AP test, this step is worth a point. So traditionally, this is a very easy point to get as long as you realize that that's what you're supposed to do. And I would say, so just to be clear, sorry. I have a problem. This, well, I'm doing part B right now. I'm solving this. And I'm going to back up. This is actually the wording that you will often see. Find the particular solution to the differential equation. So you're solving for y. It says find y equals f of x. So you're solving for y. And that wording also means that your other side of the equation needs to be a function. So it would need to pass the vertical line test. Um, so that's an important um, thing to understand. Um, and these are the wording. This is the wording that says, hey, separable differential equation. So find the particular solution. That's the only way we have, really, for solving a differential equation. I might have told you um, in class that DIFFEQ is a college course and you will have lots of other ways of solving differential equations when you take that class in college because you're going to take math in college. Um, and, and then you'll have other methods. But right now, all you have is separable differential equations. So um, go for it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that first step. I'm going to move my dy stuff over. So I have dy over e to the y equals 3x squared minus 6x dx. And to me, both sides of this are really calling out for an integral sign because they both have their dx and they have their dy. So we're going to integrate both sides. And when you integrate both sides, you know, we, we're used to thinking of y as a function. But right now, because they have a dy and they have a dx, really both sides are, um, are you're treating the independent variable like this one. It, y is just an independent variable. And here, x is just an independent variable because they have the dy and the dx together. Okay. Um, often, this step is not worth any points. But the next step, finding the antiderivatives, is worth at least a point. It might even be more than one, depending on what the antiderivatives are like. So this step is usually worth a point in your solution. You want to find the antiderivatives. The other thing about this step that's usually worth something is remember that you need a plus C at this point. This is the place on the, on the AP test where forgetting plus C can actually kill your score. Because if you don't remember plus C at this point, you're not going to be able to find a solution that passes through that point. You need a plus C at this point. You need to show the College Board that you know when the plus C happens and that it happens right now. This is when you do your plus C. Um, and at this point, if you had a plus C on both sides of the equation, they'd be different C's. They'd be different constants. And then you could move the plus C over to the right side of the equation fairly easily. So I usually only write the plus C on the X side of the equation. My whole goal is to keep the Y side as simple as possible because eventually I'm going to have to solve for Y. 
in my mind, as I'm doing this integral over here, I'm going to do a little scratch work over here. I'm actually thinking of this as e to the negative y dy. And a little bit, if you need it, you can think of a u substitution. So u equals negative y so that it looks exactly like e to the x because it doesn't look exactly like e to the x. And then you can see that du is equal to negative dy. So you're going to get a negative sign when you do the antiderivative of this side. So this is just me thinking thinking of this side of the equation a little bit. So my antiderivative over there is going to be negative e to the negative y. The other side, the antiderivative, I hope is pretty straightforward to you. This would be x cubed. It'd be 3x cubed divided by 3 minus 3x squared. And this is where you need that plus C. Okay, we're not done, but we have earned a couple points already because we've moved our stuff around and we've done the antiderivatives correctly and we'd re we've remembered to put a plus C in. Often this is like three points already at this point. But our last step is to solve for Y. Um, we want to make sure that Y is all by itself and that Y is a function. So when you solve for y, remember y is equal to f of x. It needs to be a function at this point. So I'm gonna, I gotta get y by itself. I'm gonna move my negative sign over to the other side. I'm gonna divide by negative one. So e to the negative y is equal to negative x cubed plus three x squared. And you know, we don't have to make that c a negative because now it's just a different constant. And the College Board is totally okay with that kind of sloppy algebra for C. Um, now I need to get rid of e to the, so I'm going to do the inverse of exponential. So I'm going to natural log both sides. And so I get negative y is equal to natural log of this whole mess, negative x cubed plus 3x squared plus C, and that is all part of the natural log because I'm natural logging the entire side of the equation. And this is why you need to add your C at this point. You can't add your C at the end. You have to do it right when you take your antiderivatives. I'm out of space, so I'm going to fix that. Uh, there we go. Magic. Um, so I'm not done because y is not by itself and because I don't have a particular solution. So I'm going to get rid of my negative sign. So I'm going to make this y is equal to negative natural log of this business. And then I'm going to solve for c. And when I taught this, it's always true. You can do these in either order. Sometimes it makes sense to solve for C earlier. Sometimes it makes sense to solve for C later. Do what makes sense to you as you're doing that um, problem. So um, I want to make sure that you understand that you, you do have to solve for both. You can do it in either order. So now when I'm solving for C, I'm using my initial condition. So X is equal to one. Oh, pause for a minute. Usually this is worth a point. So both of these are worth a point, so that's why this is such a, a low scoring event because it's a lot of points. And if you don't know how to start, then you lose all the points. And so I think that's why it's low scoring, but um, and it's a big process, so there are lots of chances to make mistakes. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in my numbers x is equal to one, y is equal to zero, so zero equals negative natural log of negative one plus three plus. C. So I know that um, the, the exponent is 0 because um, I can divide by a negative and that goes away. And so e to the 0 has to equal negative 1 plus 3 plus C. So that means that um, this has this side would be one, and I'm going to space again, but I can 
lots and lots of space, magical. Um, so I have one is equal to two plus C. That means C is equal to negative one. And don't make the mistake of circling that and thinking you're done. Your final answer has to be Y equals negative natural log of negative X cubed plus three X squared minus one. And that's your final particular solution to that separable differential equation. All right, thank you.